Hi, I'm Andreas Benning. Uh, I'm an assistant professor here in the computational biology department. So I do research at the intersection of neurobiology and uh, genomics. So for as long as I can remember, I've been fascinated by how the brain works. And my particular approach is to uh, look at the uh, genome itself. So the genome controls a lot of features of the brain. For example, within the human population, differences in genome sequence can lead to differences in disease predisposition, including neurological disorders and psychiatric disorders. Uh, across uh, different species, differences in, in the genome sequence can lead to different behavioral traits. So for example, the increased intelligence of uh, humans um, or things like speech. And actually speech and, and a component of speech, vocal learning, is one of the focuses of my lab. So vocal learning is the ability to hear a sound and then mimic it. And basically the way that we study this is by looking across species. So humans have the ability of vocal learning, but uh, chimpanzees do not. So at some point there was a mutation in the genome, and that mutation created a new neural circuit and allowed us to have this behavior. So what's interesting is that other species have this behavior too. So what my lab is doing is comparing across different genomes and looking for genes and uh, features of the genome that all of these species have in common. Um, so I also mentioned that uh, I, I'm looking within the human population about what leads to uh, the predisposition to certain neurological and psychiatric disorders along those lines. My lab is focused on interpreting how different mutations in the genome lead all the way to those diseases. So most people have heard about, for example, genes for Alzheimer's disease or genes that might influence aging. But actually most of the mutations that influence things like aging or Alzheimer's, they actually don't occur within the genes themselves, but they occur in what used to be called junk DNA or non-coding regions of the genome that influence the levels of different genes. So it's really hard to know what a mutation is doing. So my group is uh, building models to infer that. So uh, on the one hand, we use computational approaches to make guesses about how mutations and sequence will lead to differences in disease processes and behavior. But we're also developing genomic technologies on the experimental side to actually follow up on some of those computational models and then further refine them combining the computational approaches and the experimental approaches, we can go all the way from these mysterious mutations in the genome all the way to things that influence the disease process.